Hi, my name is Savinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I want to teach you and give you tips on how to play Cult Express, a game that definitely stands out from other games. Apart from its really cool setup, what I love about the game is how tactical it is. The play mechanism is also very engaging, so it makes it a lot of fun. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button because it helps a lot. In Cult Express, you play a bandit robbing a train in the old Wild West and trying to collect as much loot as possible, all the while punching and shooting other players and avoiding getting shot. After five rounds, the game ends and the richest player wins the game. To set up the game, assemble and place the train in the middle of the table. Place the locomotive at the front and add one carriage for each player, whichever you want and in the order you want. I'll show you a four-player game today. Place the loot of jewels and purses as indicated in each carriage here. The purses are taken at random and kept face down. Place the neutral bullet deck near the train and finally place the strong box and the marshal in the locomotive. Keep the second strong box near the train as the marshal might bring it later in the game. The marshal is a neutral character controlled by all players who can shoot and chase bandits. Now each player will pick their own character. Collect your character card and meeple of the same color. Each character has a special ability, which I will explain later. Place the six bullet cards in order of the number of bullets face up to the left of the character card. At the beginning of the game, your gun is full. You will use it to shoot at other players. Then shuffle your 10 action cards. Draw the top six cards. This is your playing hand and place the deck face down there on your character card. Finally, collect a $250 purse and place it face down on your character card. Place the remaining purses back in the box and then we are going to set up the round cards. Randomly take one of the three brown train station cards and place it face down here. Put the other two back in the box. Then select the round card deck corresponding to the number of players, either two to four or five to six. Shuffle them and randomly take four of the seven cards and place them face down on the brown train station card. So randomly pick the starting player and then that one will go in the last carriage, the caboose. Place a third and if there's a fifth player also in the caboose, then place the even numbered players, the second and the fourth, and if there's a sixth in the card next to the caboose. During the game, players can move their bandit on the roof, but they all start the game inside the car. Now we are ready to start the first round. There are five rounds in the game, each defined by a round card. At the start of each round, flip the round card to see if it plays in four or five turns as shown here. Both decks have seven possible cards. They show the number of turns per round, either four or five. If there's no symbol, the card is played face up, but in a tunnel here or here, players play their card face down. Here you play two cards in your turn, and the symbol indicates that the players will play in reverse order. Finally, on the top right, it shows the events that will be resolved at the end of the round. The round train station cards always have four turns. They are always the card you play in the last round. Each round is played in two phases, regardless of the number of turns there are. The first part is the scheming, where we plan our actions. And the second part is the stealing, that's where we resolve these actions. There are 10 action cards, but only six different actions, because some actions have two cards. All the players have the same deck, but I'm going to use the red player to explain all the different actions. Let's start with the two move. With them, you can move from inside a car, either one forward or one backward. Or up to three cars, if your bandit is on the roof. To get on the roof, you can use one of your two floor change cards. Use the same card to go back inside the car. The single marshal card lets you move the marshal one car. The marshal protects passengers so he never goes on the roof. If a bandit and the marshal end up in the same car, the bandit gets shot and is sent to the roof of the car. The player also takes a neutral bullet card and places it on his personal deck. This happens whether the bandit enters the car with the marshal or if the marshal is the one moving and enters a car with the bandit. Also, if there are more than one bandit, they all get shot and get sent to the roof. Then you have two shooting cards to shoot other players if they are on the same level and in different cars. 
Only Red Tuka can shoot through the roof, either up or down. If you shoot another player inside a car, you can only shoot one car away. However, on the rooftop, you can shoot as far as possible, but if there's a player in between, he will get shot instead. If there's more than one possible target, the attacker picks the target. The targeted player puts the shooter's bullet card on his personal deck. Note that when Django shoots someone, the target also goes back one space in the same direction and on the same level. If they cannot move, like any other time in the game, they stay at the same place. If there's no target, like here for Tuka, who doesn't have anyone next to him or above, then you keep your bullet card. And if you run out of bullets, then you can't shoot anymore. To attack someone in the same car and on the same level, you can use the single punch action card. The target drops one of its loot. The attacker selects one of the loot from the player's character sheet and places it face down on the floor without looking at its value. Finally, the attacker moves the bandit who has just been punched one car on the same level, either forward or backward. Note that when Purple Bell is shot or punched, if there's another possible target in the same location, that target takes the hit instead. If Bell is alone, she gets punched or shot like anyone else. Cheyenne has the ability to pick up the loot immediately after punching, if it is a purse. Also note that it is the attacker who chooses the target. Now, to pick up the loot, you can use one of the two robbery cards, pick one loot from those on the floor of your current location and on the same level, place it on your character sheet face down. So these are all the action cards each player has. Now, at the beginning of each round, players will draw six cards or seven if you're playing the dock. The first player will draw the first round card, flip it over and play the first action card. Then in clockwise order, the players will play one or two action cards depending on what the round says and stack them. Ghost's special ability is to have the option to play his first card face down, which he does. Then Bell decides to pick up a loot. Tuko assumes Ghost picked up a loot and punches him. Doc wants more cards in his hand and decides to take the option of picking up three cards from his draw deck. This replaces his action this turn. And now it's Ghost's turn again. And like all players this turn, he will play his card face down. Then all players play two cards at a time. And finally, all players play one more card face up. And their turn is over. Now is a good time to recap each player's special ability. Ghost has the option to play his first card of the round face down. Doc draws seven cards instead of six at the beginning of the round. Belle cannot get shot or punched if there's another player with her. Tuko is the only player who can shoot up or down. When Django shoots, the target also gets pushed one space in the same direction. And finally, Cheyenne can pick up the loot immediately after punching if it's a purse. Now it's time for the stealing phase. The first player will take the deck and will resolve each action one by one in the order they were played. We start with Ghost picking up a loot and he chooses a diamond. Purple Bell is going to do the same and also pick up a diamond. Red Tuka punches Ghost and therefore drops a diamond and shifts him to the other car. And Ghost gets lucky because he can still pick up a diamond and Bell picks up the last diamond. Duke is also going to pick up a diamond. Doc is going to shoot at Tuco because he's the only one he can shoot at. Ghost is also shooting at Tuco. Now Ghost will go up. Belle is going to shoot and the only one she can shoot at is Tuco. Belle punches Doc, who drops a purse and shifts him to the caboose. Tuco shoots at Belle and since she's alone, she takes the bullet. Tuco is going to move up. Doc picks up a purse. He punches, but there is no one there, so it does nothing. Ghost moves three all the way to the locomotive. Bell shoots and can only shoot at Doc. Tuka moves the marshal one car. And Doc moves him back. And that's the end of the stealing phase. At the end of the round, you also resolve the event 
shown on the round card, if any. In this case, the marshal drops an extra strong box. In this one, the marshal will shoot all the bandits who are on the roof of his car. They each receive a neutral bullet. Then the marshal moves one car backward towards the caboose and also activates that car. This one is the swivel arm and pushes all the players who are on the roof to the caboose. This one shows the train is braking and all the players on the roof move one car towards the locomotive. With this one, place the second strong box where the marshal is. Here the passengers rebel and all the bandits inside any car receive a neutral bullet. In this one, any bandit who ends up alone can pick up one purse token from the floor. For this one, any bandit who ends up on the roof on top of the marshal drops the least valuable purse on his character sheet. That last one shows that any bandit who ends up in the locomotive robs the conductor and receives a $250 purse. All the round cards have the same events for 2 to 4 players or 5 to 6 players. The only difference is that in 5 to 6 players there are less turns. At the end of each round, all players reshuffle the 10 action cards and the bullets received so far. Deal a new hand of 6 cards or 7 for Doc. So the more you get shot, the more likely it is you will have useless bullets in your deck. There are some expert variants in the rules. You can look at them once you've played a few games. Once the last event of the last round has been resolved, it's the end of the game and it's time to count the points. The player who has shot the most bullets collects the $1,000 gunslinger bonus. You flip the card. In case of a tie, these players all collect the $1,000. Then each player adds up the value of their purses. They can vary from $250 to $500. Then each player adds up their jewels and strong boxes on their character sheet. The player with the most money wins the game. In case of a tie, it's the player who receives the fewest bullet cards who wins. Now my tips to win a Cold Express are... The $1,000 you get for being the gunslinger is a lot. It's important to keep trying to get it. So please do shoot, a lot and often. It's a great game if it's played quickly, so make sure to keep the rhythm going. It's a good idea to stay at the back of the train at the beginning of the game to collect a lot more loot while the others are trying to move forward. Strong boxes can make a lot of money. So if you have the opportunity, try to get them, but Beware, you will be everyone's target once you have it. So that's how you play Cold Express. It's a really fun game. It's quick and exciting and it's great for beginners and advanced players. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.